actually has the skills to change a good idea into a business model. He's worked uh, in major projects on TV, online, multi-platform, games and music for Disney, Comcast, DirecTV, Intel, IPG, Showtime. Today, on Mentoring, we're going to bring on Seth Shapiro. Seth has won multiple awards. He speaks around the planet talking about business, entrepreneurship and ideas. He can make things happen. That's what he's going to do. He's going to mentor a protege. He works for Walt Disney, Comcast, and he's a two-time Emmy Award winner. I'm really happy and really proud that you're here with us oh, to you. share your experience and your insights with us. Give a warm hand to such a girl. Most of the stuff that you read in the media is just a fragment of what's really going on. People who drive this stuff are riding a, a really long-term communications and cultural cycle, frankly, um, that they're aware of that doesn't get talked about a lot. People go out and try and repeat what their boss did or what their father did, they're already losing. They're already losing the word to adapt because the times have shifted. The reality that's all around you that you don't acknowledge is completely different because all of these forces and variables have shifted. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that helps you understand why um, we have a shift from Sears to Home Depot and from retailers to big box stores, etc. But those are really slow trends when it comes to your career and the only lifetime that you have, right? You've only got 40 years, so you want to maximize it. And how do you do that today? But here's the good news. All of these companies were created in unravelings or depressions or recessions. So if you look back historically, most of the changes have not happened in highs. They've not happened in booms. They've happened when the bets were off. Look at the number of companies that were created during the Great Depression or various recessions and you'll see what I'm talking about. Disney, United, Fortune, Revlon, HP all started during the Depression. Disney has started like seven months before the Depression and has to weather it. The big consolidation of Standard Oil, when you actually go back and look at the history of Standard Oil, it has to deal with the whole reality of the Civil War and it still makes it through. So it's not about the terrain. It's about how you adapt to it. When bets are off and consensus is low and individualism is high and nobody knows which way things are going to break, that's an amazing time. Summarizing, all of these four businesses start very messy and over the course of 40 years or so, they evolve into this. And this is basically what 20th century looks like as we're heading into digital. What I started to say before about that birth of television point and prior to that, the point where Dickens comes in is that it's in this business and cultural cycle, that thing that I called an unraveling, um, where all bets are off and new models get developed. Guess where we are now? We're in the next unraveling. This is a point where new models get built, where economies are in tough position, where individuality is prized. 40% of the Forbes 500 is gone within 10 years. That's the last 10 years. Going forward, it'll probably be higher. And that's the litany over and over and over. Whoever's winning doing this one thing will suck the marrow out of that thing <laughs> until they're alone and desolate and naked on the road and everybody else is past them and then they realize that it's a carcass. Because the objection to Darwin being applied to business from a lot of people is that it's just too nasty. That business isn't about extinction. People don't die. Uh, well, really. Yeah, we don't have to get into analyzing particularly what the music business did wrong other than everything. Um, <laughs> this is that critical period, 2001, 2002, where bandwidth gets good enough to really become disruptive. It hits them all at once. All within 18 months of each other, they're all decimated, largely. So that's the power of a technology wave to ride, right? Now, what would you have done if you had seen this coming? Well, surprisingly, there were some people who saw it coming. Cable has added about 60 channels in the last five years. You can see for yourself how many more channels people watch. None. In the 21st century, there's this thing that even though everybody talks about it, I think is still widely underappreciated. And that's just how tremendously disruptive digital is. Because what happens is, all of these things in retrospect, all of these business models are based on one thing. 
and that's constrained supply. Digital blows that away because all of a sudden people have choice. And so it's not just the, the moguls and the curators and the publishers that decide what people are going to consume. People are going to decide for themselves what they want to do. And what happens in rapid succession from that, once digital unshackles supply, is that in print, that in movies. And by the way, this is that critical period, 2001, 2002, where bandwidth gets good enough to really become disruptive. It hits them all at once. When you're helping people with digital services, one thing that you do is you help create a new conversation between whoever that is and their audience that didn't exist before because there's so many ways to do that. Here's the thing. In the old days, if you were trying to market a product, you could buy a mailing list or you could try and figure out who those people were. Guess what? Now, you kind of have to be an idiot to not to be able to find them. They're out there. They're following other people who are interested in the same thing that you are. And so if you do your homework and um, find the people who are likely to like what you are doing, um, then you'll get an instant response. Online video is not just a technical change, although it's a technological change for sure, it's also a cultural shift, right? It's a generational shift, and those things are really hard to put back in the bottle. You can't stop them. You know, somebody's kid in, in 10 years is, is, you know, somebody's gonna tell their kid, you know, when I was your age, th this was a one-way thing. You didn't talk back to it, and they're gonna be like, get out of here, that's crazy, how boring. that are impacting your business and I'm sitting next to a walking breathing tech trend really. Seth knows everything about everything. Oh you. you <laughs> Seth is actually a two-time Emmy winner, a USC professor, and a currently a Television Academy governor, which means that he sits on the board. And you've worked for DirecTV, Verizon, Intel, and you've helped launch a lot of new services. All this stuff is amazing when you go back like 80 years because it's all happening all over again now and in some ways TV does kind of feel like that horseless carriage you know everybody watches TV but nobody watches it on TV so you right. know why do we even call it TV anymore we're in the eye of the hurricane everything's transformed but how does it become codified you're seeing patterns in in, in the entrepreneurialism around it or in just the way businesses and government shift and collide oh totally and the strongest is that clearly narrow beats broad um, businesses that look to reach everybody will fail. Your goal is to define the niche and the audience that you can command because as we move further up this business cycle, there's going to be more and more scale. More and more people are going to come into the conversation. So if you can command an audience, now that audience will probably grow. If you try to speak to everybody, you're going to get washed out. So now let me ask you about a global market, okay? If and you've actually, you've spoken about this and I was, I was looking at some of what you had to say. This is demographic data, just happens to be comparing uh, France to India. If you were gonna design the ideal demographic data, you would have a lot of really young people at the bottom who are gonna move up, generate value, generate wealth, and support fewer old people at the top. That's pretty much India. Measure the things that are going to be appropriate for your success. That's how you create a new model. Don't do what everybody else did in the past. Figure out what you need to measure to succeed creatively or economically at what you want to do. We're in this wild west period. How do we organize it and how do we, how does it deal with the traditional businesses? You know, there's a quote that I always like and it's from some uh, existential flaw, like Kierkegaard or somebody like that. And he said, when you're living your life, everything will seem like chaos and none of it will make any sense. But when you're older and you look back, it will be incredibly well ordered like a play. You'll look back and go, oh my God, I can't believe how this led into that, led into that. But when you're in it, you just don't see the past. Same thing in business, isn't it? Same thing in business, totally, right? Two Emmy Awards? Two Emmy Awards, yeah. What do you get What do you get an Emmy Award for? Because I don't see you in any, you and George Clooney in something? What was it? I played George Clooney in a TV movie that a lot of people didn't see, um, fortunately. If you look back to the days of the horseless carriage, there was a point where suddenly it stopped making sense calling the thing a horseless carriage because nobody had horses anymore.